Here we have a worker ant and a queen ant. As we observe them for a while, the worker ants keep carrying something toward the queen. So what exactly is this object the queen ant is holding? Today, to reveal some secrets about ants, we've brought one queen ant and several worker ants. These ants are Campanatus obscurapes, also known as Japanese carpenter ants. If we zoom in on a worker ant, you'll see its reddish thorax, which is one of its defining features. Now let's compare a worker ant and a queen ant. The size difference is obvious at a glance. The queen ant especially has a very large abdomen. That's because her main role in the colony is to lay eggs. So the reproductive organs, or ovaries, inside her abdomen are highly developed. The queen ant doesn't have wings, but queens are actually born with wings. Before she starts laying eggs, the queen takes part in what's called a nuptial flight, during which she mates with several males. She stores the sperm from that time inside her body, and after that, she continues to lay eggs for the rest of her life without mating again. Because wings are no longer needed after the nuptial flight, she intentionally sheds them. If you look closely at the back of her thorax, you can still see traces of where the wings were attached. And here's the surprising part. Despite looking so different, the queen and worker ants are actually genetically identical females. The difference between the two doesn't come from their DNA. It's determined by the food they're given as larvae. Larvae that receive plenty of nutrition grow into queen ants. Once a queen ant matures, she secretes a special substance called queen pheromone. This pheromone suppresses the reproductive abilities of other females, i.e. the worker ants. Thanks to this pheromone, there's no conflict between queens and workers, and each ant takes on its own role, allowing them to build a well-organized society. Now, if we take a closer look at the ants, besides the queen and workers, you might notice something that looks like tiny grains of rice. Zooming in, they look like this. And if you examine them carefully, you'll see their shape is slightly unusual. Touching one, you'll see it moves, and moisture comes out from one end. People often mistake this for an egg, but it's actually a larva. If we zoom in even more, you can see the jaws here. Doesn't it look a bit familiar? In a previous video, we took a larva out of a giant hornet's nest to show you, and it looked very similar to this ant larva. That's because ants and hornets are closely related species. Ants belong to the Formicidae family of the order of Hymenoptera, and they share a common ancestor with hornets. That's why ants and hornets have many traits in common. Just like worker hornets feed and care for their larvae inside the nest, Worker ants also take care of their young. When we place one queen ant and one worker ant, and put a larva between them, we can observe the worker picking up the larva with its mandibles, and carrying it over to the queen. Isn't that fascinating? Normally, the queen ant stays in the center of the nest, which is the safest place. So the larvae are carried to where the queen is. If we place larvae in the center of the ant enclosure and watch, we can see the worker ants are carrying them all at once into the nest area. The part covered with this red plate is the nest. Lifting the red plate slightly for observation, you'll see the queen ant in the center of the nest, surrounded by all the larvae. Aren't ants truly fascinating creatures? Apparently, in many countries, more and more people are keeping ants as pets. When I looked up ant keeping kits sold online, I was amazed. Not only are they well designed to match ant behavior, but they also look really cool. If you'd like to observe a queen ant up close, try raising them with one of these kits. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel. This has been Fishy Science. 
where we use science to uncover the mysteries of the natural world.